As we're waiting for students to join us in our meeting room, we can go over the WebEx interface. You can see that my webcam is showing here. I can also choose to minimize my self view if you don't like watching yourself. And this is actually backwards, so it's like I'm looking in the reflection of a mirror. And if you want to see what other people are seeing, you can click this mirror button so that you can see this is how it should look to them. Okay, so as you can see, Ariella has just arrived in my WebEx classroom. Now that we have students in the course, I'll show you the rest of the interface. Down here, you've got a bunch of um, buttons that are really important. Right now, we have this on mute. This is your audio where you can choose to mute or unmute the audio. I'm just having it muted because these are um, not real classroom participants. They're just there to show you what it looks like. But if you want to temporarily mute your audio, you can choose to do so here. And then if you want to stop your video, you can temporarily choose it here. So you can see I'm down in this corner and I'm going to click stop the video. And when I unclick it, it's going to bring it up again. Now, if that seems a little bit weird to you or if it's been clunky for you before, one thing I like to do is I actually like to put a sticky note on my webcam. You can see I'm covering it with a pink sticky note right now. And that way I can take that sticky note on or off whenever I want to be seen. Okay, this button is for sharing content. Please make sure to see our video on WebEx sharing content to see how that works. But right here we have the recorder. So if you want to record your meeting, then you need to make sure to click this at the beginning. And it'll say, do you want to record it in cloud? So if you have a, cl a, a place to save it, or I think it'll actually save it in the WebEx system, or you can choose to record it to your computer. So I'm just going to choose record in cloud and click record. And it'll say it's connecting to the recording service. And then you can choose to pause or stop at any time. I'll go ahead and hit stop. And when it does, it'll say, if you stop, you can restart. A separate recording is going to be created. So I'll go ahead and hit stop recording. And then when I log into WebEx or come over here in my WebEx system, you can see I, there's this recording section where I should find that recording I just created. These two buttons will open or close the different features in the right-hand sidebar. So this opens and closes the part participants list. And then this closes or opens the chat list. In addition, these other features, notes and polling, will also show up in the sidebar. So if you click it on or off, it will appear or disappear the same way. And last, if you want to quit the meeting, you're going to hit this X button. OK, so what are we viewing here? Right now, I am viewing one of the students in the course. And then I have thumb, thumbnail views of all the other people in the course. As you hover over these thumbnails, you can see that you can mute or unmute the participant, which you can also do over here. And then you can chat with that participant individually. You can also pin that person. So what WebEx tries to do is as people are talking, it will bounce back and forth. So I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, as uh, they are talking, it is back, bouncing back and forth, which is good in a way because it shows us who is talking so we can focus on them so it tries to simulate what it's like in real life but it's also hard if somebody's supposed to be the dominant speaker and we want to just focus on them so this pin button down here is also up here so you can pin the dominant speaker if you'd like to and then if you want to learn more about the participant you can click on their profile card to see more information about them the next button is a chat feature which opens up in the sidebar. This allows you to chat with the entire group or participants individually. Some other things that you can do that you might want to play with is you can click on this more options and this is where you can take notes. These are notes for you personally that you can then save as a text file or you could give a pull out to participants which we show you in another tutorial video. And some other features you can get to in this options is you can choose to invite and remind people, copy the meeting link so that you can send it out if people are having trouble. You can test your audio connection and your speaker microphone camera. This is really important because this is going to allow you to change how the audio is connecting. If you chose computer and it's not working, you can choose differently to have it call you or you call into the meeting. And then this is where you can make sure that your speaker microphone and camera are working. Just be aware that if for some reason they're not working, but you know you set this up, 
just come back in here again and make sure because sometimes for some reason it, it reverts back to settings that you're sure you've already changed. A couple of other views that you should pay attention to is we have these three views as you hover over. Now, if there's only two people, you and a student or you and somebody else, you won't have these views because they will be your dominant image and you'll be in the corner and it'll be flipped for them. You will be their dominant image. But if there's more than two people, then you have a couple of options. One, you can choose to be the active speaker video view. So this is where anybody who the active speaker is, that's the person that we see. And then we also see ourselves in the corner. You can also choose the thumbnail view where it shows the dominant active speaker, but then you also have thumbnails of the recent people who have been talking or participating down here. And last but not least is the grid view. And the grid view will allow you to see as many people are actually in the course. So right now there's just me and then two other participants so I can see them in a grid view. Um, yesterday we tested 82 different participants and there were several pages that you had a little arrow here for that you could scroll through um, so you can see everybody who's actually participating. So that was kind of cool. So I like to stay in grid view for right now. And then last there's the floating panel view. And when you click that, it's gonna make it really big and fill up your entire screen. You would just find the same button to minimize back to kind of a floating window. In the left hand side, there is an information button and this gives you your meeting information so you don't have to go all the way back out to WebEx to get the URL. If somebody is asking for your meeting number or the video address, you can give them this and what are the phone numbers that they can call in if for some reason their audio isn't working. So this is really important for troubleshooting with participants in your meeting who aren't hearing or something is going wrong on their end for you to easily and quickly get them this information.